If you need to update your deck, go to 50cards.shop. Get 5% off your next purchase when you use code NEXUS. Hey guys, how's it going? This is our friend Omar. He's the infamous man who made it to top 8 with Phantom Blaster Dragon. Woo! Omar made it to top 8 in Team League with uh, Kedra Sanctuary Shadow Paladin. We don't know how, but he's going to explain it to us right now. How the man did it. So go ahead, Omar. Hi, guys. So as Richard mentioned, this is the PBD deck profile for the top eight placements for D Standard here at the Bushy Road Spring Fest in Ontario. So first off, I'm going to go ahead and start off with the ride line right here. So pretty standard for Shadow Paladins, ride lines. A lot of people wouldn't say that PBD is that good, but this variant is kind of more like a rush variant. So first off, our starter, full bow, you know, trusty dog. We go ahead and go into our grade one, which is the Blaster Javelin. So again, it's still pretty obvious at this point when written by Blaster Dark. Go ahead and look at the top card and call it to the field. And that's primarily important for our next card, which obviously is Blaster Dark. So again, Blaster Dark skill is counter blast one, retire your rear guard, retire another rear guard on board and you get to retire one of their rear guards and it gets twin drive. So this is good, especially if you're rushing against your opponent. I know a lot of decks right now in the format usually tend to wait and conserve until their grade four turns. So usually this kind of catches them off, especially if you're rushing against them, you hit triggers and then they have to either guard or take the damage early on. Then finally, our main boss here, obviously, Phantom Blaster Dragon. Who? Phantom. <laughs> <laughs> so again with PBD skill, counter blast one, retire three rear guards. You get to go ahead and retire two of their rear guards and he gets plus 10,000 and a crit. So again, usually the way I play this deck is kind of a rush format. Especially if you're trying to beat over, you know, decks that wait until they're great forward like Bruce or Bastion or even Seraph Snow who tend to pop off really big when they get to their grade four turn. So that's it for the ride line. Now as to our grade ones, we go ahead and start off with four Mugen. So Mugen is one of the newest cards that we recently got, one of the recent sets, and it's very good, especially when trying to fulfill the condition for Phantom Blaster. So it's skill on plays from hand, from hand. You go ahead and discard a card from your hand and go ahead and look at the top two cards of your deck and you get to call them as rest or put them in drop. So just overall really good in trying to fuel that uh, necessary requirement for the PBD skill. So you get two cards, you usually want to call them regardless. I know it sucks when you hit triggers, um, hit especially big oofs when you hit that over trigger and have to call it out, but at the end of the day, it's all, to, it's all for feeding this bad boy over here. And so you just go ahead and call it out. So for those. And then another great one is the One Tech Karen. Uh, I honestly don't know why he's in here, <laughs> um, but honestly Karen came in huge sometimes, either when I needed an extra card to discard, or not discard, but to retire for the skill. So it's skill, obviously, when placed from hand, go ahead and rest and go ahead and call, look at the top card and call it. So just a one of, good tech to have. Uh, came when I needed it came when I didn't need it, but it was still good to have in hand. Next up, we run another must. It's four, uh, Brunner. Brunner, yeah. So her skill is whenever she's retired by a skill for a blaster card, counts as two. So again, just trying to fulfill the skill for PBD. Needs three, this is an automatic two card cost. And then, in order to combo off with Mugain, we go ahead and run the three of these. So this one, it's very, 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 very good card for this deck, especially with Mugain, especially when she calls things as Mugain calls things as rest for the card, Assalta. When Assalta is discarded for any cost or when she is on placed you go ahead and stand a rear guard that's in the back row. So let's say for instance, you go ahead and play Mugain. Mugain's effect will, in order to activate it, you have to pay cost, which is discard a card. You go ahead and discard this card, look at the top two, and there's a, if there's a card that you would want to stand for this turn, that would really benefit you. You go ahead and call in the back row. Then 
off of her skill, go ahead and stand it up. So just overall, just good combo piece with Mugen. I run the three of, I found three of is perfectly fine because later on in the game, you're not really calling stuff with Mugen and this to stand, you're mainly calling stuff with Mugen to go ahead and retire for Blaster Dark skill. I mean, not Blaster Dark, Phantom Blaster skill. So that's why I run three of those. And then for our early rush, since a lot of decks tend to focus on their grade four turn a lot more heavily now, go ahead and run these three Fono Lunas. So her skill is whenever there's no card in the column which it's placed, including my own other regard circle and your opponent's regards, it gets plus 10,000. So this is very, very good for the early rush. You mainly really, really want to see this on your first turn whenever you draw into it or in order to call it because usually a lot of opponents don't tend to call stuff into their columns really early on. So you go ahead and surprise them by calling this. Let's say you attack with your vanguard and they hit a trigger and it's like, okay, go ahead and swing for another 18,000 because it gets a plus 10 since there's nothing in the columns. So really good card to have, really good rushing card early on. Even when you're at grade two, also a good card to rush, but later for grade three and onwards, usually just a card for DVD. Next, we go ahead and running four perfect guards. Pretty self-explanatory, and they need them to survive, especially against decks that have crits, lots of power. So we go ahead and run four copies of the Knight Delve. So Delve skill, whenever you retire two or more cards this turn by an ability with Blaster, he goes ahead and gets 10,000 power. So again, this is again mainly an aggro deck build, mainly to go ahead and counter any great force. So when you're on PBD, you're always going to be sacking more than two cards. Always, always, always. Especially because it's kill, you need three. So it's an instant 20k beater. It just hits for good numbers, especially when you need regards on board. So pretty great overall. And then finally, the last grade twos that we run are four copies of Maka. So Maka skill is um, when placed, gets plus 5,000 if you have a Blaster Vanguard, and you get to activate its second skill, which is Soul Blast 1, retire another one of your rear guards to look at top five for a grade one or less and call it to rear. So again, Maka is just there, again, just for another body, plus, plus 5,000 power is pretty good, and just the ability to search you know, potential targets for retirement PVD, any grade one target, so it'd be Karen or Brunner or Mugain or any other grade one. It's just good to filter out the deck too, so you can be more consistent with trying to hit your triggers. So that's why we run Mako. And then finally, as part of the main deck, we go ahead and run three PVDs because you are a PVD deck and your main goal is to ride PVD. Obviously you ride with this, but you mainly also want to go ahead and keep persona riding just to go ahead and keep gaining more advantage. You know, 10,000 the front row, drawing cards, and also just calling cards out of your soul because that's its skill when placed. Yeah, when placed, choose a card with Blaster in the soul, call it out, it's just a free card to call out. Really important to keep rewriting. And even if you don't rewrite, the pressure of the 10,000 of the plus 10 of crit is still really, really good. Really good pressure. Okay, now we're on to our trigger lineup. Trigger lineup, that's pretty standard, I think, for the most part. Run four of the new crit. Uh, you mainly don't need to run the, this one in particular. This one's the at the end of battle with boosted, put into soul, choose one of your rear guards and give it plus 2k. Uh, there's no really need to use that skill. You can run any crit. I just run it just because I have them available. And there you go. I'll go ahead and run four heals. Pretty self explanatory. If you're not running heals, you're more susceptible to die. So heals are important, keep you alive. Making sure that, you know, you know, get those lucky sacking heals and giving you an extra turn, possibly. Let me go ahead and run four fronts. We run the fronts mainly specifically for the shield value that they provide. You know, that extra plus five does come in handy a lot. It came really, really handy today in a lot of matchups. So you run, you want to run four of. Even then, too, even though it's not a crit, just being able to power up your front row, especially if you're... Your front row consists of these two of these guys hitting a front. They already hit for 20, now they're hitting for 30 and possibly 40 if you persona rolled that turn, which is just overall big value having these two cards and then getting front trigger. Finally, we go ahead and also run three draw triggers. 
PBD relies on a lot of having its pieces for the retire effect, as well as no specific pieces for rushing or you know, any utility you need for the deck in that moment that you're running for that turn. So overall, you need to draw into cards. This helps you do that. Um, obviously, you have to run the the draw trigger, the the five the plus five k, so the ten k draw trigger, because overall, just more shield value helps since you're already at five compared to all the other ones which are at fifteen. Just having that nice 10k obviously helps a lot, especially in guarding situations. And then finally, obviously, last card, the over trigger. Uh, it's not as great as it would be in a Bastion deck, considering that Bastion comprises mainly of grade 3s. But still nice to hit, still nice to get more card advantage, even if it is just one or two more cards in your hand. Really, really good. How excited are you for PBO in that next set? I'm very excited for PBO. Yeah, PBO right. just changes this deck list completely, though. I bet it does. It's yeah. Because this good. this is just build. I built this mainly for the grade fours. Yeah. Grade fours tend to want to wait a lot, or want to at least get to a healthy grade four turn where they're not at a lot of damage, but or that and puts have pressure on them. Yeah, right. this puts a lot of pressure on them, especially like I said, hitting the hitting the the eighteen k grade one and the 20k grade 2 just rushing that them they don't suspect a thing especially when you're running and then hitting front triggers it just makes it even more deadly well done all right thanks yeah. so much appreciate it congrats on getting to the top eight man no problem <laughs> Woo!